Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, we actually were fortunate enough to meet with Blair Bunting. He is a successful commercial photographer who shoots celebrities and sports figures as well as advertising campaigns. His work has been shown in, uh, in Billboard magazine and he's shot for Disney and Discovery Channel and a bunch of other places and clients. And so without further ado, let's join our conversation that we had right here with myself and Blair Bunting. Well, here we are with Blair Bunting. Blair, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We actually had some really cool stuff on uh, Facebook and Twitter. People actually want to ask you questions directly, so... That's unfortunate. I, I think it'd be fun to do this. So let's uh, look right here. Here's a guy, I cannot pronounce his name, sorry. But he says, uh, can you tell us three absolute must-have traits of a good photographer? What do you think? Three absolute must-have traits. Yes. Um, Hair? <laughs> well, first, yeah, definitely being sexy is a very important part of it. Um, no, I, I think uh, patience uh, and, and creativity. Obviously, creativity would, would be a, a dis definitive must, but a lot of people think it as, as you know, your eye going towards the photo. I think creativity in the aspect of management of a set and knowing what, what can be done to account for certain lacks of, like say you have a set, like we're, we're lighting uh, uh, in Miami, I'll be shooting tomorrow, and uh, we have to have a bunch of packs around water and actually in water. Everyone will be in the water. Uh, with all the watts and uh, it's electrifying. Yeah, it is. So you know, going out and buying floats and rafts and everything, and 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 uh, and what you can really do on the budget, how creative you can be with the budget, with with the client especially. Um, so you mean creativity, not just as much as lighting and styling. You're talking about how do you yeah. manage money and people and space. Yeah. And Unfortunately, at the end of the day, it does come down to money management. Some of the best photographers out there take take photos that are, can be beaten by a person that's out of work, but they know how to manage the business aspect of it. Um, crap, that's, that's two, isn't it? Yeah, that's two. One Three. more. Three. Three. Uh, a patient wife. Patient wife. Yeah. God. Um, and be willing to travel. Okay, we'll just, we'll, the wife thing, we'll just put that as the ulterior, or the ultimate one. <laughs> and uh, be willing to be on a plane and, and sit next to every person you can possibly think of uh, day in and day out. Um, there's your three. I relate to it. Okay, um, let's see. What about uh, this never dying question? Here's from Jeff. Uh, one lens that you can't live without. Is there one lens you can't live without? <laughs> I have been asked that a thousand times. I know, me too. It's um, 24 to 70, but other than that? Yeah. Hmm. If you're shooting Nikon, it's a 24-70G. Um, there's no other lens to have on a Nikon and actually the sharpness, contrast, flare reduction of that lens makes its primes almost a moot point. Um, now, if you're shooting Canon, uh, it's primes. Uh, so, oof. 35144 for walk around, 8512 version one, Mark one for, uh, for an all time lens. Uh, actually, 135F2 if you're using it at one body for the balance. Um, doesn't get any better than that for a camera, in my opinion. So it's one group of lenses. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. uh that, That's the tough thing, is there really isn't a lens, or a camera, or a light. It's, uh, it's, you know, you have to sort of use the tool that works. That's about opinion. the truth, yes. No, I agree. Speaking of that, okay, CEB Imagery says, what's the one lighting modifier that you can't live without? Um, I have a, 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 a modified uh, Photoflex Medium Octa that um, that has silver and gold inserts uh, with a, a front uh, with the center baffle but no front diffuser that I love. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of my go-to for a key if I'm on a on a quick set. Um, honestly, the light modifier that works the best is the one that the shoot calls for. I hate to say that; that sounds so cliche, but it's true. <sighs> yeah. All right, so Blair, one of the questions that I, uh, I really want to ask you and a lot of people written in, and that is what gear, what, what are some of your favorite pieces of equipment that you like to use? Cameras, lighting equipment, light modifiers, things like that. So can you help us with that? Um, gear wise, uh, I love Nikon. Nikon um, D3X and, uh, and, and that 2470G is kind of the go-to lens. I use the exact same lens and same body 
for two years straight. Now, you shoot on location a lot, so why the D3X over the D3S? Is it just the megapixel power? I like the megapixel and the resolution that you get out of that. Mm -hmm. um, I have a D3S as well. Um, it just, it kind of stays at home for a little bit. Um, I'm going to Miami tomorrow and I'm actually going to bring both because uh, we're shooting around water and, and I think there's a good chance that I'll probably uh, destroy one of the bodies and so right. I want a backup body. So uh, D3X, D3S. Um, and as far as for lights, uh, it's Photoflex Tritons all the way. Um, I shot for a long time like, uh, well I, in studios I'll shoot Profoto because I need the power usually. Um, but for location it really, you can't beat um, you can't beat a Triton because it has a lot of power, it's easy to use, and uh, you can get so many pops for the pack. There's a bunch of people outside. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of the, uh, the go-to. Um, alien bees are great, but you have to plug them in. Right. So Battery powered, on location, way to go. It is a sweet, sweet get up. I will say yeah. that. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about your professional work. You have a lot, and I've got about oh, 90 pictures here, I think, that you uh, Ooh. sent us, which is cool. Um, my favorite show, without a doubt, is uh, Mythbusters. Yeah. And you shot uh, Adam and Jamie. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, how, how you approach, I mean, you've done a lot of celebrity shoots. Yeah. Um, how do you approach celebrities? How do you get them to be comfortable, and how do you interpret them? Um, everyone's going to be different. Um, definitely want to have your research. Uh, you got to know that, you know, this celebrity has had this in their past, that's not a good joke to have on set, or, you know what, this celebrity has, you know, found that they had car collections, and, and so you can talk about that. Um, a and good do, one's... Do producers help you with that, or the, you know, the context outside of the, the celebrity handlers? No, usually, I mean, sometimes you'll ask questions like, what do they do in the off time, mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, but, at the end of the day, it's just kind of, they are real people. Um, if, if you get starstruck by celebrities, um, not an industry for you. Uh, it's definitely one of those things that you have to be completely willing to ask someone that, for example, the Brett Michaels thing, or well, actually we're on Mythbusters. We're talking Mythbusters. about Brett Michaels, so it's, you're talking about the cover where he yeah. is uh, yes. on natural. Yeah, I mean, I had thought I was comfortable with celebrities at that point, and I had shot nonstop for about three weeks beforehand of nothing but celebrity work, or athletes mostly. And uh, the new level is, how do you get comfortable with the celebrity enough to just tell him to take his clothes off? So... And it, was that your idea, or did he come to that? I mean, how did, how did it that It was talked about beforehand between Billboard and, uh, and, and him, and then myself. Um, but at the end of the day, it still sucks. Like, just... <laughs> yeah, like there's not really... A good way. There's not really a fun, easy way to approach that. And it's kind of like, it's like doing your taxes because you know what it takes to actually get it done. You just don't want to see the conclusion. Gotcha. So, yeah, because there is no sticker that says 100 ways to get your music are seen and heard. It's no, just no, Brett. The, the, yeah, just Brett. Yeah. Uh, and a guitar and, and well, minus. And was, all that stuff. All right, so in addition to shooting uh, celebrities, you also shoot uh, sports figures and portraits. And when I'm looking at these, uh, mm -hmm. one of the things that I noticed, and uh, perhaps you've answered this question before, but the lighting style looks a little Jill Greenberg to me. Is that something you've heard? Is that something, what's, can you tell us how you, you light? Because you have this very distinct, you know, uh, light coming from behind that looks a little similar to that. I think uh, that's a, <laughs> you're gonna punch me now? No, I'm, I'm going to uh, imply that you're wrong, so this is gonna be fun. <laughs> okay. Ready for this one? So, the lighting style isn't Jill. Um, the lighting style's uh, the same kind of setup that Avedon used. Um, the post, or the desaturated mm -hmm. with contrast in the mids, that's Jill. Um, also that kind of perfectly brushed skin kind right. of thing, all that kind of stuff. That would be where your, your assumption of Jill would probably come into the whole set. Um, the lighting is pretty much the concept is go after it, blow out the whites and draw usually the attention of the eyes. And mm -hmm. so how you draw the attention of the eyes, you make attractive catch lights. And so attractive catch lights in the eyes are actually what people will associate themselves with the photo. Right. You can really screw someone up. You can always just take a picture of someone, take the catch lights out of the eye and they don't even want to see it. Right, they're all dead eyed. So. Uh, how much post do you normally do? I mean, there's some here that look to me like there's just no post. It's, it's, it's very light People are touch. gonna hate me for this one, so bring it on YouTube. Um, not much. I, I, I hate 
Photoshop. I really do. I have CS3. Um, and when this interview came out, I don't even know what's out right now. Is it CS? CS5.5, I think. 5.5? Or 5.1. Cool. Something. It's I, in the fives. Sweet. Um, very little. Um, well, let's talk about that because go that, for that's it. very interesting to me because when I look at uh, a lot of the shots that you have, specifically things like um, your cars, so they're very decentralized. Wrong one to use on that one. That Lots. has a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, so this, this car here, this is. Uh, that's, so there's only about two images on the website that actually have more than one photo. Everything gotcha. else is actually out of camera. Um, one file, I don't like to drop in skies because I can't cut out of Photoshop to save my life. Um, that one with the uh, the car, if you go back to... Uh, this with the mountain and the, this one right um, That's uh, Rocket Art Studio did that. Um, okay. Pretty much that one has the car and a different sky. Um, the lighting was pretty much flat through that whole thing. Um, but that still has a lot of post-processing in it. They, well, they even, did a lot of retouching. Even other shots, and, I, and I'm not, okay. I love this stuff, actually. Okay. I think it's, it's phenomenal, but uh, this shot of little people, so here's a girl with okay. her, that, and there's, it looks to me like a texture that's yeah. been dropped into the sky. That's, uh, yeah, so a lot of times you'll go on a set and you'll find, you know, if it's a flat sky or a sky that actually is close to a neutral, it doesn't really have uh, a very tonal range in Arizona. In the yeah, Southwest. Arizona. It's just it's blue. all the time. Exactly. Um, usually, I'll look on set for a texture or something like that that actually works to be set into the sky, um, whether you know it's just the ground or a random door that's nearby. Um, there's got to be some kind of detail up in there eh? because a, a flat blue sky is well for me. It's boring. It's obviously yeah. in the eye of the beholder, but for me, I just I could care it's less. It's horribly boring. Um, Here's one of my very favorite shots. This is uh, done for the deadliest catch, and it's okay. this guy getting a hook in his face. There's blood flying. Um, obviously, there's been some, some work done here. Walk us through this, this image, and I know there's been okay. videos made of this. Yeah. Um, how did this come about? How did you, uh, wh where did the concept come from? Did you think of this? Did you do hmm. some storyboarding? Okay. Just walk us front to back. How did, how did this um, it was uh, the third year that I was shooting for Deadliest Catch, um, and I got a call of these kind of these photos that were that were taken like a portrait of you um, unbeknownst to you some horrific accidents happening like you are going to get hit by a hook or you're you're going to be washed off the ship by a wave or I, f I think a rope was another one right. um, it was the moment that you realized that something is wrong but before you could address it so Gotcha. Instead of having them react to the hook and actually, you know, you start to move back, you start to clinch up, it is a deadpan uh, portrait that's just had an environmental issue like a hook uh, come through and, and crush a guy's face. <laughs> crush a man's face. Yeah. Name. There are so many uh, scientific inaccuracies and in, in physics that are involved in that that just, you know, obviously he's getting hit by a hook. How's the blood already going out? All, right. Those things. Um, but I had to have an excuse to use my teeth in the photo. Um, but <laughs> it's, it's, the concept was, and they drew it out really well, um, the guys over at Discovery Creative um, had pretty much this shot and said, make that. And how much is it going to cost to hit models with hooks? And is there, you have so did you actually that? hit the model with the hook? No. You just... I, would, I mean, they were cool guys. Um, <laughs> They're staff there was something in me that kind of was like, you know, Kind of always wanted to see a person get hit in the face with a hook, but there's there's a certain aspect that, you know, maybe it's not the right thing. Maybe maybe you just like kind of like lean it up against their face, but you kind of want to push it a little bit harder to see if it just kind of because I you get this. I, I never got in a fight in high school, but you, you know if you just right. so yeah for that one we uh, we just held up a hook, saw how the imprint would go, used a bunch of uh, leaf blowers, indented the guy's face, um, and then. Took a picture of the hook kind of sideways, a little bit Dutch. Um, oh, nice. But damn, would have been cool to actually hit a person in the face with a hook. Well, there are a couple other questions I want to ask. I know we're, we're running out of time, but um, you strike me as a guy that is very, uh, in a good way, very geeky, technical, scientific, and pretty smart. Is that? Would you say that's accurate? I think everything but the smart part is actually pretty okay, damn accurate. Okay, so not very smart. But, no. <laughs> but how, how much do you think that knowledge of all things scientific and scientific principles and, and understanding those things, how much do you think that helps you to do things like, 
lighting and photography and post and th all the things that surround um, photography. Is that important yeah. to you? The lighting aspect is. Um, and knowing, I mean, general principles of, 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 of of color and of temperature and, and of power and of contrast ratios. Being able to dial a ratio is actually one of the most important things of lighting I think people take for granted. Um, but as far as the post work, my, I, I'm really, I hold true, the post work is very, very much the least important um, aspect. Um, I think actually what the science does is it gives you something to talk about. It gives you something to geek out on because there's going to be a time when you'll sit at home for a month and you have no calls, you have no work to do. Um, so that's something I kind of embrace. I, I, I really look at it as uh, a fun little outlet that I can go and study because when I was in college, my degrees are in business and sociology. I, I didn't take any science courses that besides like a general biology, um, never took physics and I always kind of loved that. And uh, I think what it does is the science aspect romantically encapsulates the photography aspect. Um, because when you think about it, and I, I'm so sorry, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is my hero, said this first. Actually, it was a scientist, he had one of his shows on Star Talk, um, said, if you think about it, you are a historian, a historian because your subject that you capture, you're actually just capturing their light. And so the light actually coming from your subject to your film plane, you're actually shooting a person one forty-five millionth of a second behind who they were. And so therefore, everything you're documenting is always just, it's just the past. It's just everything is the past. Yeah, so it's the fun little ways to look at things that really make plane rides go by so much quicker and, and, <laughs> and make blogs so much more fun to write. Right. Uh, you have a blog. It's pretty awesome, and, and you write a lot about these adventures that you have, and yeah. the pictures that you take, and how you approach things, and some of those things. Where can people find your blog? Um, physical address? Yeah. Oh, what is it? Blairbunting.com slash blog. Blairbunting.com slash blog. Very straightforward. If you want to waste way too damn much time. It's, it's very mean, interesting. In fact, uh, there's an awesome article I just read just a few minutes ago about you and shooting a horse and a girl, and it's pretty cool. Um, well, I think that's it. We're out of time, so thank you so much for joining us today. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.